is the Fade Five Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, you jack wagons. Brad, the big noise happens here. The good son, Nathaniel Lundy, alongside me. I am in a wretched state right now. Uh, the accumulation of units lost was god awful yesterday, and I need some winners and we have one more opportunity tonight on monday night football and mercifully i believe this is the last time uh that we're going to see the denver broncos in prime time and thank goodness for that uh because oh, they no, have no. Taken no 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 off my life no no they're gonna put nope. them back in prime time one more time coming up later this season please scheduling oh. gods just start over just start over would you jeez yeah, hit the damn reset button. We need it desperately, but maybe we'll get a sneaky shootout. Who the hell knows tonight in a rivalry game of sorts between the Broncos and the Chargers in the AFC West. And currently, and I pulled this line from BetMGM, we have LAC uh, laying four points. It's down from an open of five and a half with a total of 46. Uh, and no hook involved at all. And that uh, was originally as part of the equation. It would open at 46 and a half on the game total. But it is shaving off 46 because over 80% of the handle right now was on the under. And is completely justified based on how uh, wretched and rancid and repulsive the Broncos offense has resembled so far this season. So, Lundy, give me a game score prediction. Will the Broncos get right offensively tonight? Uh, yeah, actually, I think they will, believe it or not. Um, I'm going to actually, first and foremost, I'm going against the public because basically uh, I was kind of, I was chilling in the same hot tub uh, as the public uh, most of the day yesterday, you know, like when you travel and you decide you want to go to the hot tub at night and there's, a, there's already people there and you're like, all right, fine, whatever, I'll get in, I'll hang out with these people. That's where I was over the weekend. So yeah, the unit count that I gave away, Brad, I'm not sure I can count that high. Uh, after yesterday's plays. So, uh, yes, actually, I do believe that the sort of bad luck, the inability to get things done in the red zone, uh, that the Broncos will be able to get that done here. Remember, the Broncos have had kind of this pseudo bye week. They have not played since that Thursday night trash fest yeah. um, against the Colts. So they've kind of had this mini bye week because they've had the extra break. Um, dealing with a lot of the injuries, things like that. So I I'll tell you what, first of all, I'm actually going to take the over uh, in this one, believe it or not. Um, and I like the spread a lot better with Broncos plus five and a half uh, than I do now that it's down to four. So I'm staying far away from the spread, but I will take the over uh, in this one and I will call it 27 20 uh, as a final uh, score. I do think the Chargers will win, even though they don't really have a home field. Yeah, they don't have a whole field. I think Denver's got to play some respectable football tonight, and we demand it, gosh darn it, uh, to keep me entertained for three and a half hours in this uh, what you know, resembles a rubbish affair. But uh, I think uh, you know the Broncos will show up. Uh, I think Denver uh, defensively still has a lot of talent, especially in the secondary despite Roby's absence. Uh, they're giving up just 6.01 pass yards per attempt on the season. So I got it to LAC 27 and Denver 23, so handsomely over, uh, along with you, and it's a full-blown push, so hopefully you got it uh, early on when the line opened at Broncos plus five and a half. With that put to bed, let's get after it with another edition of the Fade Five. Number five. All right, let's look at K.J. Hamler, who is still fuming after Russell Wilson explicitly missed him uh, last week in the end zone, wide ass open on a slant route, uh, took off the helmet, slammed on the ground, and, uh, you know, he has a, a lot of pent-up anger that he needs to release. And I think it's going to happen tonight. The coaching staff has said we need to get K.J. Hamler more involved out of the freaking slot, and I think he's going to be a ching slot machine. So pull that lever and take the over on 22 and a half receiving yards, and it's plus money, even money right now. At tape time, available at DraftKings Sportsbook, plus 100 is the exact juice. You look at Hamler, uh, yeah, he's only seen four total targets this season. He's been an afterthought. It's been a nothing but really Cortland Sutton uh, with a little smattering here and there of Jerry Judy in this wide receiver core. But he, you know, when he's seen a target, it's typically downfield. He's got three deep targets on the season. Those are passes beyond 20 yards. He has an A dot 
as ridiculous as it sounds, of 28.5 yards. That's pure insanity, and it's all about sample size. Sample size, Evans, uh, which is playing a factor there. But he's still averaging 16.3 rods per game. He has been over this in one contest out of four tries so far this season. And you look at the Chargers, 10 dudes at the wide receiver position have gone over this, and they're giving up uh, just above seven pass yards per attempt. So not as stiff, not as stingy. Uh, as prior secondaries we've seen in L.A. from this Charger squad. But K.J. Hamler, uh, I think you got to feed the beast. Uh, squeaky wheel gets the grease. And that's why I'm on the over 22 and a half receiving yards plus 100 at DraftKings. Lundy, fade or follow. Uh, in full disclosure, Brad, I took the under on this one when it opened at 24 and a half. It's actually down a couple of yards because a lot of people have been hammering it due to the fact, as you pointed out, he's only got four targets. Yes, I know he's still pissed off uh, from the end of that Thursday night game, but I told you, it's been an extended buy. Those things just flutter away like all of my money over the weekend. Um, so I'm actually going to fade you on this one. I, I liked it better at the under at the 24 and a half. I think he gets a catch, but I don't think he's breaking one for 55 like he's done before. I just don't think the targets are there. I think the targets are going to get sprinkled elsewhere across uh, the offense for the Broncos coming up here against the Chargers, in particular, the tight end position. Ooh. Ooh, that could be a little sneak preview. Don't play like the canned ham, KJ. Number four. All right. Uh, this is one of my favorite wagers. It really should be higher on the list. Uh, but it is at number four today on the fade five. And I am taking the over on Melvin Gordon. 55.5. A lot of nickels there. Rush yards. Minus 115. Available right now at Bet MGM. And I would play this up to like 59 and a half. And it's understandable. Uh, the reasons why statistically the chargers are giving up an absurd 6.19 yards per carry and well north of 120 rush yards per game to the running back position so you know, gordon uh, a guy who is going to be the centerpiece of the offense had always been practicing on a limited basis all week long but he should be good to go probably to get uh usual around 15 16 carries in this one he had 15 for 54 last week against a more robust front, although they got gashed yesterday by Jacksonville and he faced the Indianapolis Colts. But revenge game? Revenge game for Uncle Melvin? Uh, certainly could be the case. And it's a splendid matchup. Five guys have gone over this total against the Chargers this season at the running back position. And Gordon has forced a missed tackle 25% of the time. That's a really outstanding production in that category. So, Lundy, are you with me? On MG3, over 55.5 rush yards, minus 115 at BetMGM. Yes, I'm I'm absolutely on the over, and I'm with you. This should have been a lot higher on your list, Brad. Not only a forgiving defense, but uh, a team that Melvin Gordon is obviously very familiar with, and the fact that Javante's out. I mean, this is, this is you're going to have to force feed this guy if they want to try to do some play action. Some of those are going to have to be handoffs. We know that. That's exactly what Russell Wilson needs to be doing more of uh, within this offense for it to get on track. And so because of that, I think they hammer Melvin Gordon, especially early in the game. I think they try to set some things up with this Chargers defense and then take that defense and try to air it out, maybe to your boy K.J. Hamler, even though I disagree with you on that one, but try to air it out downfield. Um, but Melvin's going to be so important to that establishment that I think this number is way too low. I think he's at 65 plus. Feed the veteran the ball, Russell Wilson. Number three. All right, let's live it a land down under on a quarterback prop. And no, it's not tied to uh, our dubs. Uh, and really, everything should be tied to him in, uh, in a kind of painful tone uh, as far as unders go. Uh, definitely uh, take the under on everything Russell Wilson social media wise. But Justin Herbert, I am taking the under on 266 and a half pass yards. And this uh, line has actually climbed a little bit. Uh, it opened as low as 261 and a half. I saw that at Bet MGM, but this 266 and a half you get right now, or at least at tape time, at minus 115 at DraftKings. And I still think it's too high. You know, I know that Roby is out in this second for uh, secondary for the Denver Broncos, but they still have depth and they have a lot of talent there. Justin Simmons, uh, is he going to be back tonight? He's very close. No, I believe he's going to return maybe next week for the Broncos. He's right there teetering 
on the edge of activation. But Simmons is also out. Still, there's some talent here. They give it up just north, as I mentioned, of six pass yards per attempt on the season. And you look at Justin Herbert. Yeah, he's gone over this in four of five games. Uh, but Denver has yet to allow a passer to reach anywhere close to this as they're giving up 204.4 pass yards per contest. Rivalry game. I think the defense, again, rises to the occasion, keeps this, uh, you know, respectable, at least within striking distance. And as a result, it's going to be close. Uh, it's going to not be sweat free by any stretch of the imagination, but apply that extra layer of Old Spice and take the under. I think he lands somewhere between 260 and 265 here in the end. Lundy, fade or follow. Justin Herbert, 266 and a half. Pass yards on that under, minus 115 at DraftKings. Here's the problem. I, I understand uh, I, this is another one that I would rather pass on. And part of the reason why is because the primetime games are pissing me off. Yeah. Uh, every time I think I've got a handle on what somebody's line is going to be, it winds up uh, skewing in, in opposite directions of, of what I thought, um, especially with the player prop side of things. Games, not so bad. I hit it last night in terms of the spread. I hit it in the over under yesterday. But um, in terms of the player props themselves, these have been hard to be able to predict. I do think you're going to be sweating and sweating bullets uh, with this one. You're going to be the, the gif. You're just going to have like pools of water. Uh, coming down because I do think he's going to touch right up against this number. So for me personally, I will pass. If you want to go team Huevos on this one with Brad, you go right ahead, but I ain't touching this, this prop at all. Huevos gigantes. Uh, let's join the miserable ride. Number two. All right, let's correlate, synergize, bring it all together. If I am under on Justin Herbert, 266 and a half, oh, why not go under on his presumed top target and Mike Williams on 70 and a half receiving yards, juiced up a little bit, minus 125. And I pulled this one from points bet. Uh, most of the books right now, I've got this as low as 66 and a half. Uh, some of them have it at 68 and a half, and I still would take the under on the 60 and a half line. Uh, to be honest with you, look, Mike Williams has seen a massive target share. And I understand that 8.8 .8 targets per game, that's 28.9% of the team looks. He has registered this season. He has been over this in convincing fashion in three games this season. And in those three games, he hit the century mark in each of those efforts. 24 targets in total he has recorded over the last two games alone. But you look under the surface, and he's not really killing it in some of the advanced analytics where he normally kills it. dot average depth of target. He's wide receiver 40. Yards per route run. Uh, guy is you know, historically like top 15 every single year in that category. He is outside the top 30 right now. Uh, you know, of course, Keenan Allen is out, still nursing that hamstring. But he is going to get a ton of... Of Patrick Sertan. I think it's going to be shadow coverage, which I know is a rarity of the NFL nowadays, uh, but it really applies in this situation. Sertan this season has only given up 7.5 yards per catch and a 72.4 passer rating. And for that reason, I am under on Mike Williams, 70.5 receiving yards, minus 125 of points, but Lundy, fade or follow. First of all, let me correct myself. There's a possibility Justin Simmons will be activated for tonight. Um, oh, I, I apologize for that, folks. I thought they had said that they didn't expect him back. It's actually the flip of that. It is, but he is basically going to be a decision for tonight in LA. So I apologize. Got my my wire Liam! backwards. It's it's been a it's it's been a weird morning up in this <laughs> dome uh, for everybody. So uh, I'll save you the trouble. But yes, I'm sorry, Justin Simmons. It is possible he's going to get activated for tonight. That is the most recent news out of Nathaniel Hackett as the team got ready to go to L.A. for tonight. So I apologize for that. That said, with or without Simmons, I like the under on this one. I think he's going to be close, Brad. I'll be honest with you. I think he's going to get up to 55, 60, 62, somewhere in that range. But I think he does finish underneath because, again, Pat Sertan has shown exactly why the Broncos used that high draft pick on him. He has been spectacular in the secondary. He's extremely difficult. Uh, to be able to match up against because he doesn't matter. He doesn't, he doesn't care who he matches up against defensively. He's more than happy to take on whatever the challenge is, even if it's a guy uh, with the size that Mike Williams has. Sertan is comfortable with it. So I like the under on this. Again, I think it's going to be similar to what we just talked about with Herbert. I think it's going to be close, but I will ride with you on the under with this one because I think Sertan can break up just enough passes to keep him below this number. Keep Williams under wraps. 
Broncos. Number one. All right, uh, it's Mike Boone season tonight. Uh, if I like a Melvin Gord on the over rush yards, how about uh, I like the over as well on his tag team partner in this offensive backfield? And I'm going to take that over on 27 and a half rush yards, a minus 115 at Bet MGM is where I pulled this line. Uh, look, Boone um, race passes uh, in the last game without any difficulty whatsoever. And I think he's going to get, what, roughly seven, eight balls to belly. I mentioned the shortcomings defensively of the Chargers in the trenches. Uh, They have been deplorable in that category, as I mentioned before. 6.19 yards per carry and over 123 rush yards per game they have allowed to the running back position. So, uh, you know, that is an area of vulnerability. Uh, I know the Broncos are without bulls on that offensive line. uh, So there's some reshuffling going on there. But ultimately, I still feel that there's enough talent up front uh, to open up some avenues for Boone, who's got a lot of juice in the legs. He showed it in the last game uh, against the Indianapolis Colts, and I think he's going to show it very much so tonight. I think he's going to easily eclipse 30 rush yards. He Really what he is is uh, the Denver Broncos version of Tony Pollard. Uh, that's a great way to pull it, in my estimation, as the Zeke Elliott is clearly Melvin Gordon, who doesn't have a lot of juice, but he's got some shimmy and shake in the legs. I just doesn't have the separation speed that he once did as a member of the San Diego slash LA Chargers. But Boone tonight uh, on seven, eight carries, as I mentioned, I think hits 30 yards and the over on this rush yards prop minus 115 at Ben MGM. Lundy, are you with me? Vader follow. So you're not buying into Latavius Murray, huh? You're not going. Uh, you're not going down because remember he was inactive in that yes. first game, that Thursday nighter against the Colts. They brought him on. Uh, they they brought him in after the injury to Javante Williams. That's what makes me nervous about this particular prop is because we have not seen what, if anything, the Broncos have planned with Latavius Murray. Because again, he's been on the roster now. This is the second game he's been on the roster, but the first one they made him inactive. He was not, he was not suited up and therefore they could continue to use the combination that you're talking about of MG three, my Melvin Gordon, as well as Mike Boone. But I'm waiting to see exactly what they do with Latavius Murray. I think that it's still going to be Melvin Gordon at the top, but Latavius gives them that sort of, you know, put your head down bruising type of, of guy that just wants to run. Um, And it's just going to run into dudes. And and I'm not convinced that they're not going to continue to use Boone, Brad. My concern is that it's going to take away just enough of the carries that this number is going to be a lot harder for him to hit. That's my only concern. Um, Otherwise, I think this would be a no brainer. Uh, But because of that pass, no, forget it, dude. I'm not going with you on this one just because until I see exactly what this offense wants to do with Murray, I don't trust it. Uh, I may take the over on Latavius Murray rush yards as well if somebody offers it. So I'm t- I just put that out there. I'm taking over at all Broncos running backs. Uh, I'm I'm done with it. I got to take advantage of the Chargers. Screw it. I'm you're, in. You're like me. You're just digging after a bad weekend. That's what you're doing. That's what yeah, you're doing. well, and there's more digging uh, to come, and I have a shovel in hand, so let's get after it. It's bonus time, Lundy. Uh, what else do you like? Maybe in this game? Maybe in Major League Baseball, Yankees, and Guardians. Maybe in the NHL. And I might actually have a pick in hockey tonight. So what do you got for me? What? Jeez, the hell is frozen over. Um, (laughs) All right. Uh, First of all, I I mentioned the tight end position. So when it comes to the Chargers, here's the thing. If you look across all five games, um, you're seeing a team that's giving up an average of 4.6 catches and 59.8 yards per game to the tight end position. But... If you take out the game against Jacksonville, where Jacksonville's tight ends accounted for one catch for nine yards, that was it. If you take the other four games and average it out, you're talking about a Chargers team that's giving up five and a half catches in north of 72 yards. Therefore, Eric Saubert, 15 and a half receiving yards. That's it. That's his number. It's a standard juice right now at DK at a minus uh, 115. I'm taking the over on the 15 and a half yards for him because I do think they've got to find out. You talked about them trying to feed the squeaky wheel that is KJ Hamler. Um, I've been the squeaky wheel here in Denver trying to remind the coaching staff that the tight end is, in fact, a position on the depth chart that you might want to consider utilizing uh, from time to time. So I'm taking the over on Sauerbert. And by the way, Bet Rivers right now has the best odds at a minus 124 for over one and a half catches. That's Mm. it. 
one and a half catches. They've got the best odds. It's juiced up elsewhere. The best juice you can get right now, 124 sitting there at Bet Rivers. You brought up uh, the baseball game tonight. I'm not touching it. I, I'm, I'm staying away from this one. Um, I think the Yankees win. You want to take them on the money line, go right ahead. I think the Yankees take care of business just because I think they've got the better um, offense here because I think this is a little bit of a shaky pitching matchup between both pitchers, by the way. Yeah. Um, and I think just because of that, there's more offensive power on the Yankees side of things. Uh, we know the uh, fans booing uh, Aaron Judge after the four strikeout performance. So I think that uh, he takes full advantage of that tonight and uh, manages to look pretty solid. But on hockey, shall we? Uh, I'm all about Sid the Kid tonight. Pittsburgh is on the road taking on a down Montreal team. So I'm all about Sidney Crosby. And anytime goal for Sid is plus 130 at DraftKings. Um, you also should probably try to find his points total. Uh, take him if you can at over one and a half points. I do think he winds up with at least a goal and an assist in this one. And you can get him on a power play point at a plus 140. Pulled that one as DraftKings as well. And then let me give you a simple two-leg uh, and we're doing the 60-minute line here. So this means both of these teams to win in regulation. Give me the Toronto Maple Leafs. They are at home against the Arizona Coyotes. And then give me the New York Rangers at home against the Anaheim Ducks. If both of those teams get it done on the 60-minute line, that is a nice little two-leg at plus 120. Oh, very nice. Uh, and uh, I, I got to you know pay it forward here because I, I do have a hockey selection. So I'm going to give this it to you amazing. right now. I'm going to take is, the this dog is over. On Matthew Kachuk, uh, I think he plays for the Florida Panthers, and he's going up against the Boston Bruins. But Kachuk, uh, this season has gone four shots on goal and four shots on goal. I know it's a limited sample size, but he done this in back-to-back -back games. He had a, one of the highest shot percentages of anybody in hockey last year at 16.6%. .6%. He averaged 3.08 SOGs per game a season ago. So just hit your SOG, as you normally do. Every single week, and it's minus 125 on the over for Kachuk in this matchup against the Boston Bruins. I felt very strange and awkward, but I'm doing it. Uh, Lundy is... Uh, you're, you're hitting your SOG. I just want everybody to remember <laughs> that those words just came out of Brad's mouth. Go ahead and hit your SOG. I think hit we the have SOG, just, fool! I think Make we it happen! Just, I think we've just found something new for the Urban Dictionary. Yeah, well, it might have a, a really a nefarious definition if you attach it, you know, to hitting the SOG. But who knows? Uh, I know. All I need is some shots on goal from Kachuk, and I'll cash a ticket in the NHL, which is a rarity for me because I never bet on that damn sport. Back to the NFL. Uh, I am going to take the over on Austin Eckler, four and a half receptions. And honestly, uh, it's my favorite play of the day. I uh, probably should put this number one instead of Mike Boone, but I absolutely love it because you can get it plus money right now, plus 120 uh, at BetMGM. And you look at Eckler, he's done this in three of five games this season, and the Denver Broncos are giving up over 52 receiving yards per game to the running back position. A couple of guys have already done this against him this year. We know Eckler is an indispensable check down guy for Justin Herbert, and he is going to be featured frequently, I feel, tonight. Uh, elsewhere, let's get a, an OGP or same game parlay. Uh, give me Denver plus 10 and a half. Give me Eckler 30 plus receiving yards, which he has done uh, consistently much like the catches this season. And give me Melvin Gordon 40 plus rush yards. So taking that down for the 55 and a half, uh, give yourself a little bit of a cushion. Uh, all three of those legs hit plus 165. If you put that together at Bet MGM. Uh, also, I like Russell Wilson tonight, over 13 half rush yards. Uh, he's finally found his legs, kind of, you know, turn about the clock to early on in his career. He has done this in three straight games, going 17, 29, and 22 uh, rush yards on the ground. Uh, he's run 14 times in total over those three games. LAC uh, without Boas, Bosa not really applying as much pressure on the pocket, but I do feel that Russell behind a rickety offensive line uh, will read, uh, recognize, and 
take off and take advantage of what the defense gives them a couple of times in this game. And I also like the over on Cortland Sutton, four and a half receptions. And I like to send yesterday at minus 120 at BetMGM. Like you see a 9.2 targets per game. He's number three in air yards. He's number six in unrealized air yards, believe it or not. Uh, but he has hit uh, the over in four of five contests. He gets Asante Samuel in coverage. who's given up a 65.8 catch rate to his assignments. Uh, and 10 guys at the wide receiver position have gone over this against the Chargers this year. Uh, and then finally in baseball, Anthony Rizzo. Hey, it's me. It's Tony Rizzo. I'll take the over on one and a half total bases. Whatever the juice is, wherever you lock that in at, it's probably going to be plus money. Uh, he is five for 10 lifetime with a couple of homers against Aaron Savali, uh, who is towing the rubber for the Guardians in this matchup. And uh, I, I believe Rizzo has done this uh, in two of his last three games. So I think he's going to continue to swing a hot bat. Uh, just see a couple of singles, a double, a home run. Doesn't matter. Give me the over one and a half T uh, on the total basis on the TB, and we cash a winning ticket. And there you have it. We are out of time here on the Fade Five. Uh, do us a favor and drop us a rating and or review at your convenience, whether you're consuming this on YouTube uh, in the animated picture and sound version, or you're just listening to the auditory version, uh, give us a uh, five-star review, if you don't mind, uh, or a uh, just a written review of some sort. Any little bit helps here in the end. Also, follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at Noisy Cuevos. You can follow Nate and all his selections at Nate Lundy. We have spreadsheets. They are free to the public. Uh, if you faded us, you made out handsomely uh, this weekend. I can tell you that. Everybody got clobbered by the sports books, but we march on. Hopefully tonight we'll score some winners. Until next time, uh, for Nate Luddy, I'm Brad Evans. And as always, feed or follow, that is up to you.